that uh, the batteries start going on that and it becomes expensive for repairs. Um, we'll know when we get there. They said you can order eight, but you're not guaranteed. So we need to look for a different option. And we found these Durangos. And the hybrid model is about $4,000 more per vehicle than the gas off. But I think ultimately with gas savings, it's was fire station two restroom locker remodel but i see it shows up here as sixty thousand. it shows up on that list as sixty thousand. so i was wondering if which mm -hmm. pot it's coming out or mm -hmm. uh thank you. thank you mayor pro tem um commissioner logan so um the sixty thousand dollars and and the chief might uh, be able to speak more of this but it's for the um design and architectural for the remodel and so um they want to move forward with that and then the actual construction costs we're hoping to um bring into the um inner cap loan great thank you any other questions okay Does that conclude your presentation for this piece? um thank you mayor person one more thing there also is included um into our packet the parks improvement capital fund and so um, some of the park use fees that we collect um, go into this fund um, sometimes there's restricted donations for parks and they go into this fund to, to fund specific restricted items but um, they are planning some some minor projects um, the six word garden park those are restricted Um, that's the baseball blockage, I believe. And then fire. Uh, continue to fund the uh, wrap up the, the funding needs for the fire tower. And so I wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Um, and uh, if the commission has any other questions, Regarding general capital, I'm happy to answer them. Um, or if uh, you're you're fine with the prioritized list, I think we can move forward in, in uh, presenting those in the preliminary budget document in June. Are there any comments? I'm comfortable with the list as it's currently prioritized. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will move on to item B, um, which is ARPA uh, general fund savings. Are we all set online now? Yes. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, is there any public comment first on um, general capital FY24 budget? Any online? Mayor Brotem, I have no comment online. However, an update on the audio. We should be good now. It seems like it was a hardware issue on the back end, but we should be okay. Great. Thank you. And thank you everyone online for your patience as we're learning this new um, system. Okay. Um, we have Ms. Opitz to present for item B, ARPA General Fund Savings. Um, just really briefly, um, Ms. Opitz is going to provide us a, an overview of where, we, where we've been and um, some of the items that we're going to discuss today. And then um, Manager Burton will provide a brief update on our contingency, and then we'll jump into um, commission discussion and we can structure our conversation a little bit more from there. 
Okay, good. Ms. Opitz. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners. <clears throat> so, uh, as you stated, we're going to start first with um, a wrap up of our total federal funding uh, allocations to date. So, just for clarification, um, that includes the CARES funding that came in 2020 and the ARPA funding that uh, came later. So, that total amount that was uh, came to the city. From the that was distributed from the U.S. Treasury uh, was around $13 million. You can see those two numbers split out, 4.7 for CARES Act and uh, 8.4 for ARPA. Both of those sets of funds, and I want to make this extra clear because um, there is some confusion, I think, in the community in which we call these ARPA funds or CARES funds. These are general fund savings. Uh, that were created by the distribution of the funds to the city. So the city claimed those funds as revenue loss um, or uh, services rendered, government services rendered, which then created uh, savings in the general fund. Next slide. So those combined uh, general fund savings from those two uh, federal uh, allocations, um, Commissioner Dean had requested that I put those into some some kind of a more consolidated look. Um, you did receive a full spreadsheet on the, at the April 5th meeting that included all the itemized bits and pieces of where these fundings, this, these funding sources went. Um, but as you can see, we've, we've tried to bring those into consolidation. So we have a $1.6 million contingency that makes up roughly 13% of those allocations. The Affordable Housing Trust uh, received 1.685 um, in the care through the CARES funding, which is about 14% of the total pot. The city finance system upgrade, so that's the new enterprise resource um, and planning software, uh, was a $2 million allocation split between CARES and ARPA um, at 16%. The uh, local business support, so that was a um, grant and loan support for MBAC. Montana Business Assistance Connection that was provided through CARES for uh, local business recovery uh, during COVID-19. We also have funding that was supported or that supported nonprofits, um, both th again through ARPA and CARES to the tune of $2.3 million, which is roughly 19% of the total pot. Uh, facility improvements at the city. So this would include um, hard facilities like the city county building law justice center build out but also the water uh, treatment plant um, improvements that were allocated at the beginning of the arpa allocations that's 21 million dollars or excuse me 21 percent 2.6 million dollars we have public safety <coughs> that's i think that's correct so yeah public safety allocations um, at eight percent or nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollars Parks and Rec projects at $455,000, 4%. Street and roadway projects, 2% to $265,000. And uh, some community development planning that went to the redevelopment agency study um, in 2020 for 1% at $100,000. So that's a lot of numbers, but hopefully uh, gives a better picture of where the funding has gone in the last couple of years. Next slide. So to further break this down, um, a big chunk of that money went to nonprofits. Um, and I, again, tried to uh, consolidate that into more easily digestible categories, uh, affordable housing, public safety, historic preservation, conservation, animal services, legal services, civic organizations, youth enrichment programs, arts and letters, and human services. Um, we can go through all of those numbers too, but if you feel comfortable with uh, where those are at, um, it just provides, again, a, a, a better look at the cross-section of the community that was impacted by those specific nonprofit dollars that have been allocated to date. Sure. It looks like we have a question. Commissioner Reed. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Ms. Opitz. Just a question on the, the previous slide. Does this include the funding that was given to HACF to further distribute or? Correct. So all the breakdowns include all the pass-through or whatever we're calling it. Correct. Thank so you. the general fund savings, that would include um, the three substantial grants that we have provided in the last few months to um, our redeemers, 
the Tri-County Fire and um, Food Share, but also the funding, there was $402,000 that was provided um, from the CARES General Fund Savings uh, for nonprofit recovery that includes that number, um, as well as uh, funding that has come since then. Next slide. So now to switch gears, we're focusing now just on uh, the existing general fund savings, and that was created through uh, the advent of ARPA. Um, again, general fund savings that are being distributed. This is what, where we're at to date. So that original distribution from the U.S. Treasury was $8.4 million. Uh, we've allocated $1.8 million to the 10-mile uh, water treatment uh, facility upgrades. <clears throat> we've allocated to several internal um, projects, the Civic Center HVAC system, the CAD RMS system, which is a um, record management system for our public safety, the Mount Helena uh, radio building, which was a project that we split with the county after that building was hit by lightning last year, the Law and Justice Center second floor remodel, and then again, the finance ERP system. Uh, that all totaled $1.8 million. The commission has put aside a contingency, which the which the city manager will speak to here in a minute, uh, at 1.6. We've allocated internal commission recommended projects, including the Grand Street Theater roof replacement, uh, a replacement of a wildland type six uh, fire truck, the Centennial tra Trail repair and paving, Henderson Pedestrian Bridge feasibility and partial design. That was a $464,000 allocation earlier this year. Uh, where there was an adjustment that was made due to insurance that came in for that wildland truck. So that brought us back up $153,000. And then most recently, uh, as I spoke to before, the commission has granted um, community aid grants to our Redeemer's Housing Project, the Community Food Resource Center, and the Wildland Risk Assessment Education uh, Program. So that brings our total at this point to $978,900 left for allocation. Um, do you wanna do the pool first or do you wanna talk contingency? Manager Burton. Uh, Mayor Pro Tim, commissioners will speak to the contingency now if you're comfortable. Excellent. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, commissioners, you'll all recall that you set aside 1.6 million in general fund savings for potential legal liability. Uh, it is our opinion that that is not the case anymore. Uh, and I, I was wrong. I was estimating, uh, as you know, there's a loan set up uh, with the uh, street department uh, and there was going to be an intercap loan for repayment. Um, and the, I, I communicated to some of you that the uh, payment was in around $300,000 that's been made, and I was incorrect. It's $164,000. Uh, the city attorney's office has uh, put together the resolution for your consideration to eliminate that loan and pay back the street department $164,000. I think it's going to be coming before you in the next couple of weeks. If the commission approves that resolution, then that will leave $1,436,000 that would then be unencumbered. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, commissioners, are there any questions? Any questions for the manager? Mayor Pro Tem. Commissioner Logan. Thank you. Mr. Burton, so I think the $1.6 million contingency when we had originally um, discussed the matter. There was a, an idea of part of that to be used for in, inflationary uh, concerns. Is that still a portion of that we could set aside toward, say, any of these internal uh, projects that we've funded if there are costs that are associated with the supply cha challenges that we continually have and any other inflationary pressures is have we oops, considered um, you know how much of that we should set aside um, mayor pro tem commissioner logan uh, there certainly was 
th that discussion. And we've not made a recommendation uh, or uh, analyzed that to any degree. I think that you heard in, in uh, Director Danielson's report that there was how much? Thank you. Um, $3.25 million in capital requests just for fiscal 24. That's not the, the long-term um, capital needs, but that was what was requested for fiscal 24. So uh, we uh, really are just trying to eliminate the loan, uh, pay back the street fund, unencumbered 1436000 and we look for further direction from the commission on what kind of analysis that you would uh, would like to see. Yep, Commissioner. Thank you. So I, I guess I would be interested in, um, you know, keeping that money set aside to some degree for future considerations on some of the unaddressed needs and, and um, potential financial need for any inflationary challenges that some of these projects might have. How much? I, I'm open to discussion on that, but something to think about. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments or questions? OK. Would you like to move on to the pool then, or wait? OK. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Manager Burton. So the next. Uh, the next impact to the balance uh, <clears throat> currently for allocation uh, was came from the May 8th, yes, May 8th uh, City Commission meeting. There was general consensus to provide status quo services um, for the pool this year. Um, there was a breakdown of costs in terms of in terms of how that would work. So um, in order to cover costs associated with overages from last year in order to keep the pool uh, fully staffed. We're um, at the, in a deficit of $43,000. Um, and then to onboard and train staff as well as have some startup operational costs covered uh, for this coming season, that would be an additional $80,000. <clears> and then once again, we would need that additional $80,000 uh, at the end of this fiscal year to get ready for the season. So that, that total deficit uh, would be $203,000 that the commission gave consensus to city staff to move forward with a resolution. That is still pending a vote. However, should that vote go through, uh, the, the balance for allocation would be 775900 So for the purposes of today, that is the balance that we're working with. Notwithstanding the one point four million dollars that Commissioner or Manager Burton just spoke about, that could be could become available later. I want to remind the Commission of uh, some pending items that are uh, available to continue to discuss. Uh, there was an internal request uh, for a study at scope of work, cost estimates, and schematic design for facility upgrades to the Memorial Park Ice Rink Warming House at fifteen thousand dollars. Um, I left this, uh, the Law and Justice Center information on this slide just because we have spoken about it before as an internal request. You will have noted in the last uh, presentation by Director Danielson that that has now been moved into our regular capital for FY24. So that is no longer a, pe a pending item for your consideration. Next slide, please. Um, as you'll recall, the City Commission went through a process um, over the course of many months, uh, soliciting applications, scoring, um, elevating uh, different projects that had come from the nonprofit community in Helena. There were 43 projects that came through the letter of intent to apply process from 41 organizations. The City Commission elevated seven to a full application. And to date, we have funded $1.973 million dollars to three projects, the Our Redeemers Housing Project brought by Rocky Mountain Development Council, the Wildfire Risk and Assessment Education Program from Tri-County Fire Safe Working Group, and the Community Food Resource Center from FoodShare. There are four um, and now three, I will clarify that in one moment, uh, pending projects. Um, we found out uh, last night through an email from President Check 
that Carroll College has decided to withdraw their application for their funding for the uh, Wells Warren Nelson Stadium enhancements. So that would leave the three pending uh, projects as the sustainability, sustainability study for the Helena Regional Sports Association, the mobile hygiene and uh, meal prep units that was application that was brought by United Way of Lewis and Clark County, and a client services building slash emergency shelter from Family Promise. Next slide. <clears throat> so now we'll move into uh, the proposals that you as commissioners have provided. Uh, what we'll do is we'll walk through, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, if you prefer, we'll walk through uh, the list. And then if the commissioners have uh, comments that they would like to make, uh, we'll go through each one and then open that up for discussion. I think that sounds great. Thank you. Okay. So Commissioner Dean uh, provided uh, a bank of city projects as well as community-based projects. Um, I did break those out for each commissioner in that way. Um, a proposal for the comprehensive recreation plan to include memorial and centennial parks, uh, an influx of cash to the K's Kids program, uh, Ex the, an exploration works proposal. Um, I will note that their uh, request was for $652,813 originally through the LOI process. Uh, a contribution to the solar loan revolving uh, fund and then an additional solar project on city property. The community projects that Commissioner Dean has proposed include the Family Promise Client Services Building Again, that original request was for $750,000. A Good Samaritan warming shelter and adult day program. A contribution, and this was another project that came through the letter of intent to apply process uh, from the last chance powwow. That LOI was for $2,000. And then again, the Carroll College Stadium project. Unfortunately, we found out about that uh, withdrawal before this presentation was put together or after the presentation was put together. So it is still present in the throughout. Uh, Commissioner Dean, do you have anything you'd like to add? I think, I mean, I might just put in my two cents and then we'll go into the next slides. Does that work? That's good. Okay, great. Um, so what I think I might do is just start with some of the city projects. Um, I think We'll start with the comprehensive um, parks and recreation plan. This is something that was born out of the initial conversations um, about the ice rink um, because we have had a, a huge demand um, for the ice rink. We were not able to have the warming hut open because of its dilapidated state. And that started a conversation about um, really the overuse of, of the parks facilities that we do have. Um, I think I see. I believe there he is. Director Smith is in the back. Um, for for our field facilities, um, we're essentially at fifty percent over capacity for what we have right now. Um, we're not able to keep up with the demand um, in any way, shape, or form. I think it's for a community that so much of our our identity is wrapped up in access to open lands, parks, and recreation. I think this is something that we really need to be prioritizing is what is this next big step for our parks, recreation, and open lands look like? Um, it's been nearly 17 years since we've actually engaged in this type of master planning. Um, I was in middle school the last time that we engaged in this process. Um, I'm 31 now and I my, my peers are having little kids and um, it becomes evident when you start running out of space when there's um, more and more tournaments and and um, YMCA soccer games and um, pickleball um, leagues that we can't meet the demand and we want our community to be healthy and happy um, and and have not only physical wellness but but mental wellness as, as well. Um, the parks department indicated that this one hundred and fifty thousand dollars would be sufficient to really pursue this master planning process um, and then be able to find the funding sources that we need to be able to initiate um, the, the type of improvements that we need to meet the demand that the community is asking for. Um, it also allows us to go for a lot of grants that we otherwise wouldn't be able to without that master plan. Um, I'm happy to 
answer more questions. And I know Director Smith has a lot of information about the huge demand that we are seeing, but for the sake of time, I will move on. Um, Kay's Kids is the second piece. Um, I know many people have lots of personal experiences with Kay's Kids. Um, it's a really critical piece um, to addressing summer child program and care needs um, for, for the all the years, couple decades that it has been around. Um, if we can provide this $50,000 investment um, over a three year period, they're going to be able to reach their maximum capacity of um, almost 2,900 child days of use and additional scholarships um, for students whose families cannot um, afford to participate in some of the field trips. I think this is a no brainer when we know that child care is a, a big issue right now um, and a, a pretty um, huge return on investment um, for our community. Second, oh, sure, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Just a question on Kay's kids. Perhaps we did receive a request from them at some point and a breakdown. Did we receive a request from them? We did. Okay, and it and was for 50,000 for those specific items? Yes. Do we have any idea which packet that's in? Because I'd be interested to. Yes, it was in the, it was in the dis, uh, December 9th packet. Okay, possibly why I have. It. And it was actually on page. You want to have it right here. It was on page 216 thank of you. the December 9th packet. Great, thank you. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Uh, your, re sure. your recall is very impressive. I'm organized for a reason. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, Exploration Works, as Amanda noted, this is significantly less than um, what Exploration Works has asked, was asking for. Essentially, this is a project to close in their um, the outdoor patio space on the second floor. It's not able to be used um, and is beginning to fail due to um, weather and the rest. I don't think most a lot of people know um, that the city is part owner of this building. Um, it's a really critical piece of um, access to to science and arts and and exploration as in the name for for kids um it it's a really cool project that they have envisioned to go into this space and i think that this is a small investment for us to um, help actually keep the building up and um, help kick off this project um, next is the solar loan revolving um, fund contribution I know we're going to get to the other piece of this in the budget. Um, we normally have $70,000 budgeted for the solar loan program. Um, we haven't figured out where or if that's coming from. This would be in addition to that. Um, there's a huge demand for this program. I think um, we were told that last week there's 12 applications that have yet to be funded. Um, this is a program that allows homeowners from all parts of the economic spectrum to be able to access a zero interest solar solar array for their home. Um, I think it's something that helps address a lot of issues, one of which is is um, helping to achieve our uh, our city renewable energy goals. Um, the next is the solar project on city property. Um, I'm very open to increasing the, the dollar amount on this, but I was trying to get to a place where we would be balanced. Um, and it's, it, I think Commissioner Logan will probably get to this, but there is other opportunity for some cost savings. So 250 or 280 might do it and might be, would be able to complete, it sounds like two projects, but I'll let him speak to that when, when we get to that piece. Um, moving on to the community projects, um, the Family Promise, um, client services and emergency shelter program. This is about uh, a little less than half of um, what was requested. Um, Family Promise is a really critical entity within the community. Um, when they sent in their report, um, and it it demonstrated the dozens, over two dozen families a year that they're able to um, transition into more permanent housing. Um, I know just for a lot of folks who who right now they work with their churches and our, our church does a lot. And it's a whole, whole week of preparations to get ready to take in the families um, and family promises an excellent job and 
and helping move them into more permanent, safer housing. Um, I think if we can help provide an emergency shelter facility for them, that is going to address a huge need that we currently have that is not being addressed and then also free up rooms and space um, in God's love um, for those who, who do not have children with them. Um, and then the last few, um, Good Samaritan um, Warming Shelter Adult Day Program, the $60,000 came from the project lead um, position that was within that request. Um, I think that it would be really great if we could get that piece. My, my concern is the ongoing costs if we don't know how to address them, but at least that position, I hope, could get it going so that we could find some sustainable funding sources. I think Good Sam's obviously has a very solid record of, of um, getting results. Um, and hopefully this will be a way for, for us to help, help promote that and expand the program. Um, and then finally, the last chance Powell demonstration day. Um, I was a little disappointed we didn't, this didn't get funded the last time because it isn't only a $2,000 request. Um, if you haven't been to the last chance powwow, I would um, really encourage you to go. It's, I mean, all powwows are fun, but I think that this last chance um, powwow is very special. Um, and if we can help expand um, their, their ability to bring more people in to um, attend the powwow, I think that would be significant. Um, and I don't think $2,000 is too much to ask from this pot for a, a community event that's important. So with that, that is, those are my requests. And if there aren't questions, I guess we can move on to the next. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners. Uh, next, we have uh, Commissioner Shirtlift's list of proposals. Um, so first, uh, there was a request for an addition to the sidewalk loan program. This is an existing program similar to the solar loan program uh, that Commissioner Dean just spoke to. A request uh, for some additional lighting, potentially a solar uh, lighting project uh, at the city dog park. Uh, additionally, a contribution to Kay's kids, as well as support for a solar project on city property. The community projects that Commissioner uh, Shirtliff identified um, included the Good Samaritan Warming Shelter uh, and Adult Day Program, the Helena Regional Sports Association Recreations, Recreation Center uh, Sustainability Study. Again, that additional that initial request was for sixty four thousand support for the Last Chance Powwow Demonstration Day. Uh, this was somewhat unspecified, but uh, Commissioner Shirtliff can speak to it. Um, I think. Later on in there are other proposals. There is a specific request from the uh, BID uh, to have a public bathroom downtown. Um, Commissioner Shirtliff can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this was to support either that program or a, an, a, an incentive program for business owners to provide public restroom access. And then <clears throat> the last uh, proposal was for the Our Redeemers Housing Project additional funding. Um, You'll, you would have noted in the earlier part of the presentation that we have funded that to 1.5 million. The initial request was for 2.4. Commissioner Shirtless can add any comments that he may like. Mayor Pro Tem. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Opitz. I appreciate it a lot. Um, uh, about a month ago, we heard from some folks in the ADA community that, uh, that avoid certain streets or sidewalks due to the um, need for maintenance uh, of those sidewalks. And, um, I, I had proposed $100,000 uh, in additional funding for the sidewalk loan program. Um, whether it's in that program or in uh, maintenance of our sidewalks, I think we need to take a good hard look if we want to be a connected, inclusive, and safe community. Um, it, it, what they said in that meeting, these folks said in that meeting, um, uh, really struck a chord with me. Um, regarding the dog park, uh, it's really well used. Um, it's an, uh, something that it's a safety issue because when um, during the summer uh, we take our dogs down uh, after sunset because finally the temps drop and they can actually go play. But there's been you know being right near the railroad, being right near Nature Park. Um, uh, in terms of amount, I know that uh, pad for paws or 
um, had asked for five thousand uh, dollars. They weren't sure about how much, but that's kind of on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of my priorities. Uh, Case Kids, for sure, that's a that's a wonderful program that um, could get a lot of use out of um, fifty thousand dollars. And I'm some of these will say unspecified, and that's because I'm interested in, in a discussion. Um, you know, um, not a negotiation, but a discussion to hear um, how we can kind of come to a consensus on amount. Um, I think in terms of our sustainability goals, as, and as well as saving taxpayers money, I think uh, looking at solar projects on city property is uh, well worth the, the funding and the discussion. Uh, the Good Samaritan Warming Shelter and Adult Day Program. Good Samaritan does a great job. Um, uh, for folks that are uh, needing a second or third chance. And uh, um, I think warrants uh, discussion as well. Um, the Helena Regional Sports Association Recreation Center Sustainability Study. Um, I've, there are other communities in our state looking at um, sports facilities. Uh, I think this is great for our kids. I think it's great for our community, kids of all ages, I should say. Um, it could be transformational for our community. Um, I think it warrants a discussion as well. I agree with uh, Mayor Pro Temp Dean regarding the last chance powwow demonstration day, $2,000 is an easy. Um, I've attended that once or twice. I think it's a wonderful um, uh, event. I think that's an easy one for me. The public bathroom in downtown Helena, I've spoken to folks, businesses and associations for downtown. I've been downtown for events. I think that warrants um, some discussion, whether it's looking at the proposal that Commissioner Reed brought to the table or looking at alternatives, um, you know, or if it's something that we include in our, our budget, um, you know, looking at what's the maintenance, the installation, maintenance, upkeep. Um, is it, um, um, I just, I think that's a, I think that's definitely, there's a need there for sure. Um, especially with all the events in the heart of Helena, and then our redeemers, we know that housing is a very critical need. And I'm, it's, I'm proud to say that, you know, 67% of our funding has gone towards affordable housing. I think that's fantastic. Um, and I'd like to, you know, continue having that discussion with that. I'll get off my soapbox and I'll let you continue on. Thank you, Ms. Obist. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Commissioner Shirtliff. Any questions or comments from the other commissioners? All right, Ms. Obitz. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, commissioners. Uh, next, we have Commissioner Reed's list of uh, proposals. Uh, the city project that she uh, would like to bring is the uh, support for the solar loan, so another solar loan project um, on city property. Uh, and then some community projects, including, uh, we spoke to this just a moment ago, but uh, the Helena Business Improvement District and Downtown Helena Incorporated have a uh, public toilet uh, proposal. Um, she can potentially speak more to that. Uh, the Good Samaritan Warming House and Swarming Shelter and Day Adult Day Program, once again, uh, an additional request to provide support for the R. Redeemers Housing Project. Uh, the Trail Rider Bike Trailer uh, request, and then uh, a request to set aside additional funding for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, earmarked specifically for an emergency shelter project. Commissioner Reed. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Ms. Opitz. Um, with the solar projects on city property, um, it seems the number 300,000 has been floating around. I'm comfortable with that. Um, I wasn't sure if we had some specificity around that, but if there's two projects for 300,000, that, that works for me. Um, I appreciate the suggestion of that project. Um, I don't think it was something we'd considered previously, um, and I'm, I'm delighted to see an investment in that. Uh, for community projects, the public toilet, there is information. I think it's in the packet. Did it make it in the packet? It was provided to the commission separate from okay. the packet. Yes, so there is a model called the Portland Lou, um, which is designed to be a downtown public restroom facility. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a Portland Lou was actually just put in billings within the last month. Yes? Yeah. Ordered and on the way. Yes. There's one in Missoula. Yes. I knew there were some in, in Montana. Um, I have seen them in Portland. So it is specifically designed to be a public restroom. Um, it's, it's a very uh, well-designed 
piece of infrastructure that would suit our environment. And I think um, my understanding is the porta potty that's been in Centennial Park has been well used uh, and well utilized, and it makes a difference. I will not go um, too far on this subject, but I think the need is clear. We have heard uh, comments ranging from concerns about uh, open defecation on our sidewalks um, and a, a more important uh, commentary about the lack of dignity when there is nowhere to go. Uh, so I think we it is a problem that is right in front of us, and if we can provide a place for people to go, no matter what their circumstance, I think it is high time we do that. Um, the Good Samaritan Warming Shelter uh, Adult Day Program, I think that is an awesome opportunity. I think it addresses some of the same issues. Uh, we've heard concerns both from business owners who are navigating um, our unhoused population and from the unhoused population. And I think a place for people to go during the day uh, until God's love opens is a very important missing piece in our safety net right now. I think in addition to that um, sort of ongoing need, I recall last winter, I think it was in December when it was negative 40, negative 35, we had no emergency shelter for people to go to. Um, I find that deeply distressing uh, to imagine us being in the same place again this coming winter. I think this is a way to solve that problem. And I, I feel like I'm not going too far to suggest that we might need emergency cooling shelters in the not too distant future. And knowing that our city has a safe place to, for people to go when needed um, is critical. I think um, I considered the full request. I appreciate um, Mayor Pro Tem Dean's comments about the sustainability piece, but I think an initial one-year investment to get this up, running, established, um, and ready to operationalize is going to be vital. Um, and then finding ways to sustain all of those pieces is easier once we know how it works, what we really need, et cetera. So I'm, I'm very supportive of that. Um, for our redeemers, uh, it was unspecified because I was trying to gather more information. I think the investment we made is meaningful and I don't wanna suggest otherwise. I think, however, there is a piece of it um, specifically related to Horseshoe Bend, the road that will go through um, that property that is critical to have in place before development can begin. Um, I don't know that there are final numbers. I don't know if there's anyone from the project available right now, but it is my understanding that it would be approximately $250,000 um, additional to what we have given to allow that piece to be done so that that project can move forward. I would love to see us do that um, and get them closer to the line um, because I think it is, um, it's something we can do. And if we can, that would be great. Uh, the trail rider is a little bit of an outlier and I don't have a ton of information. I had heard from community members that that was something that would be a great one-time uh, sort of injection to get that up and running, that there is a great demand for it. I don't have a lot of information about the cost, so I, I put it out there for consideration um, without a, a ton of information. Uh, and lastly, the um, funding to be earmarked. The family promise proposal to me has, well, for lack of a better word, promise, but I didn't feel that it was sufficiently detailed um, as we received it to fund um, yet. So I would like to see us put some money aside uh, that could eventually go to that project and that we know will go towards emergency shelter. Um, but I would like to know more before we put funding aside to know if the amount is going to be meaningful or not. Um, the last I heard, there was not a property identified. There were a lot of large questions uh, that I would personally like to hear a bit more about before committing to that specific project. Um, just a last couple of comments. I'm open to discussions about K's Kids. I think it's a valuable part of our city services, I would, what I would really like is to see K's kids better resourced all the time. Um, if, we, if we have to do ARPA funding to do it, okay, but that to me is a budget reflects our priorities moment. Um, and I would prefer that we are budgeting sufficiently for that program all the time and not using um, emergency funding to do it. Um, and with regard to the powwow, I, I've always supported the powwow. I, I think that project is better suited through the HACF, um, you know, grants out to other organizations. If for whatever reason that, that does not work, then I, I have no concerns about using uh, ARPA funding to support that project. Are we talking about the pool now or later? 
Um, you can talk about it now. I don't okay. see any reason why not. And I shall, my, my last comment, um, with regard to the pool, uh, as I think everybody well knows, I'm 7,000% supportive of maintaining operations at the pool. I'd ideally like to see them expanded. Um, it would be my preference not to use ARPA funding for the full amount. I think uh, at a, our last meeting, there were discussions about uh, the general fund contingency, which is not the same as this general fund contingency. Um, and I would like to see perhaps a half-half, um, half ARPA funding and half general fund contingency. I, I believe that if we revisit rates and if we revisit hours, the amount that will be needed will be less. Um, and I would really like to see us move towards um, that that service being better funded uh, so that we do not need such a large subsidy going forward. Thank you. Can I, um, Commissioner Reed, do you mean the general fund reserve? I, I'm possibly getting my terminology wrong. At the last meeting, we had talked about how there were some savings from the general fund, and we were talking about moving those into, I believe the word was contingency reserve. I, I'm not sure, but it's not this money. Director Danielson, if you could help me out, that'd be great. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Dean and uh, Mayor Pro Tem. So uh, when I walked the commission through the, the reserve policies, um, there is a, a, a policy in place to um, put uh, additional reserves in a, quote, contingency account fund that is specified for em emergency purposes. Um, there's also remaining cash reserves that um, could fund the requests that you're you're indicating instead of utilizing emergency reserves it would it could come out of just ge regular general fund reserves would be my my recommendation on that any other questions or comments Ms. opens thank you mayor pro tem commissioners Next, we have Commissioner Logan uh, with one, uh, <laughs> a very lengthy list, uh, with one uh, proposal for two uh, 50 kilowatt solar projects on city property. Commissioner Logan. Well, aren't I the slacker? Um, so coming into this meeting, I, 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 I was considering this particular Proposal, as well as uh, taking a look at the three uh, that were, or excuse me, the four that were unfunded and went through the robust application process. And I, I guess relative to my proposal, I'll speak to the solar project first and then, and then the remaining community-oriented project thereafter. Um, so the, the 250,000 kilowatt solar projects, um, that figure, 300,000, came from, uh, I talked to this former sustainability coordinator, Patrick Judge, and he said a rule of thumb is three kilowatt, or three dollars per kilowatt, I think he said. And so that would be, each system would be 150,000 a piece. And it also was, that figure was, um, sort of validated when I went out to the city shop and spoke with uh, the installer of the new system out there. Um, he was, I, I asked him his thoughts on that dollar amount, and he said the one that was going out there was roughly 120000 uh, for that system. And, and that, but he said, of your 150000 per system figure, that would allow for design um, potential. So I'm fairly comfortable with 300,000, although there is potential for us to avail ourselves of uh, Northwestern Energy's, I think they call it the E-plus renewable uh, program that they have to help fund such projects. And um, you know, there's some potential that, that that figure could ultimately be lower if we were successful, they have two grant periods throughout the year, one being May 1st, and obviously we've missed that one. But uh, the next would be November 1st, that we could potentially, if we approve these, then we could 
potentially apply um, for that for that program. And then the other the the community project that was of interest to me of the four that remained was the Family Promise. And I guess I would uh, join my colleagues in saying an unspecified amount. I mean, you know, clear clearly open to this for discussion about that. I am sort of the enviable position of, and I, I knew that over time others would bring projects to the table and, and they indeed have. And as I've heard those discussed tonight, I'd, um, I'm, I do have a question on uh, Commissioner Dean and I think, it, I think Mayor Collins also uh, has this in his proposal, but uh, you talked about a comprehensive plan for parks. Um, one of the things that has been discussed in recent, gosh, maybe within the last decade, has been the subject of a regional parks district. And do you see these being compatible, or uh, is this a different? This is not different. Um, what this, and I actually am going to look at Director Smith, too, um, in case I need some cleanup, batting cleanup up here. Um, this master plan would not only look at essentially um, what do we have, what condition is it is it in, and then what is what do we see as the future need? Because right now we are not able to meet the demand. Um, but the other piece of it is how do we fund it? Um, that would include doing the planning for a parks district. Um, if there were other funding options um, or or more strategic routes for consistent funding. It would also explore those, um, but this would fund the essentially planning to be able to leverage outside funds and consistent internal funding, which we know that we've needed to look at what overall parks looks like. 80% of recreational facilities in our broader community are within the city of Helena, um, but a topic of conversation is always folks who don't live in the city of Helena are using our facilities too. Um, so how do we adequately meet the need um, and keep it funded so that we can, we can maintain a high quality and expand? And I would actually maybe look to Director Smith in case he has anything to add. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Commission. Uh, yes, that is accurate. The comprehensive recreation master plan would set the stage for the discussions of a regional park district. On top of that, open us up to the availability of grant funding for said projects by taking a 20,000 foot look at our entire park system from the top of Mount Helena to Centennial Park. Um, and speaking from the parks office, we are in a position of having more and more teams and more and more sports, lacrosse is coming up and a lack of inventory for fields. So this will identify that, set us up for grant funding and set the stage for the discussions for a regional parks district. So Mayor Pro Tem, if I might march on, thank you, Director Smith. Um, generally supportive of that, assuming that it um, you know also addresses this need that's been ongoing for a regional parks district. So um, the next Commissioner Shirtliff commented on the sidewalk loan addition. You know, we heard a lot in, in our most recent sidewalk summit about the deficit that exists uh, in our sidewalk infrastructure. And I think, you know, the idea, this is something that we all will be discussing or our successors is how to address that. And, and, you know, the idea of sidewalks everywhere could be upwards of a $200 million bill. So great need out there. Um, we have some immediate need as Commissioner Shirtliff pointed out. And, you know, I'd be open to discussion on that at whatever amount. So uh, the next, although in the material that Ms. Opitz provided, the um, it was more uh, it was more just a manufacturer's kind of invoice for the loo. Uh, as far as material that I saw, I, maybe I missed something in in terms of you know okay we buy this 
I think there's a lot of questions as to what does that mean? Like who maintains it? What unintended consequences might there be? Because I know com some communities have had, um, you know, some sig significant challenges, particularly law enforcement, for example. And I experienced that not with a LU, but with uh, a program that was funded. It was emergency funding that came through the state to localities to deal with uh, emergency rental assistance, which amounted to um, folks being able to get a hotel, for example. Went on a ride along with uh, one of HPD's officers and went on two calls to two different hotels where individuals had been a part of the MIRA program and there were some pretty significant uh, challenges, we'll say, to, to say the least, of, of such a program. So I guess, you know, prior to committing to that, I guess I think there's got to be some significant vetting on who's maintaining it. And um, I'd kind of like to see a staff perspective on, on challenges that we might be, um, be seeing should we uh, commit to this. So those are my thoughts at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Logan. Ms. Opitz. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner Logan. I believe that uh, both uh, Executive Director John Dendy with the uh, BID is here in the room and can potentially speak to that. Um, from a staff perspective, um, I think Director Smith could also speak to that. Do you have a preference? Of I'll defer to Mayor Pro Tem. I think maybe let's start with Director Dendy and then we'll, we'll have Director Smith come up after. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, Thank you. thanks and for having me. Just so everybody knows, he's only a few months on the job, so go easy. Let's start there. Um, I do not claim to be an expert on public toilets. Um, this is a problem that pre presented itself to me <clears throat> immediately upon getting the job. So I've done some research, right? We did rent uh, a porta potty with permission from parks. We've located that in Constitution Park. Um, <clears throat> Just a little data, we started out at two, two rolls of TP a week and then went to four, and this week we're at six. Um, it's getting heavy use. The need is there. Um, there is concern about crime associated with the public toilet. And um, from my research so far, this Portland Loo, which there may be a better decision, but so far as I know, it's designed um, it's got louvers on the bottom, so you can't peek in and like see somebody, but you can tell if somebody's in there, right? Um, it's got blue lights, um, so at night, um, veins are blue. You can't find a vein. Um, it's designed <clears throat> with that intent, but this is not a sales pitch for that particular brand. It's just something I've priced and heard about. Um, yeah, certainly you have to discuss who's going to maintain it. Absolutely. Um, I have interest on my board in this. I have not gone to my board with an ask, um, but I know the interest is there. And so that's why I've helped uh, Commissioner Reed price the toilet and present it. Um, any other thoughts or questions I could address? Dr. Danielson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Commission and Director Denny. It uh, when I was looking at the proposal for the Portland Little, um, it was a little bit unclear to me about what additional costs are required in order to hook up to city infrastructure <laughs> and if any uh, cost estimates were um, provided or, or looked into for that because that it seemed to me that there were a lot of additional costs associated that would be required to install this particular model in one of our parks. Can you speak to that, please? Um, yes, um, Director Danielson, you're absolutely right. Um, that quote did not include installation. <clears throat> um, the Portland Loop Company has estimated that at thirty to sixty thousand dollars. So I'm going with sixty because we know how things go. Um, which brings that's what brings it up to a two hundred thirty thousand dollars situation. Um, as far as ongoing costs, um, 
<clears throat> this is a, the one I've priced is a um, winterized model. It's supposed to go down to negative 15 or negative 20. That does mean it uses electricity to have a, um, a small bit, uh, like a little water heater and some circulation. Um, and from what I looked at, data provided from somewhere way up in BC, so a cold climate, um, it was about 800 kilowatt hours a month in the winter, um, almost negligible in the summer. So that's like 100 bucks a month for electricity in the winter only. So, you know, it's preliminary numbers, but I'm definitely paying attention to operating costs. Dr. Danielson. Thank you. And one more question, please, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, so the $60,000 is also the infrastructure costs in order to get it connected to city water and sewer? Um, yes, that's what was um, provided to me. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Commissioner Reed. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Just a quick question. Who is doing the maintenance or servicing on the porta potty right now? Um, we, uh, Little John's does it once a week and uh, I check on it daily and replace toilet paper as necessary. And just a quick follow up if you don't mind. Uh, thank you, Director Dendy. And have you found that it has been well maintained? Have you seen problems there? What, what are you observing? Thank you. Um, no serious, thanks for your question, Commissioner Reed. Um, no vandalism, um, nothing terrible thrown down into the hole. Right. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit dirty by the end of the week. Um, if it continues to increase, if, if use continues to increase, uh, we'll have to get it serviced twice a week. Just to keep it from overfilling. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And I guess before Director Smith comes up um, and you said BID hasn't had a chance to talk about you know, what this could look like. Is there interest in, or do you think there might be interest from the BID in in taking on the maintenance costs if, should we fund the, the installation? Um, I'll have to go to the board for that. Okay. Um, there's been some discussion of investing capital up front versus ongoing maintenance, as you might imagine. But this is all um, informal discussion, and no position has been taken by the board okay. on that. Great. Thank you. Any? Yes, Commissioner Shirtliff. Mayor Pro Tem, thank you very much. Uh, Director um, Dendy, thank you very much for being here today. Um, that, that was going to be one of my questions, is the potential for cost sharing. Um, back to the porta potties or the porta loos what's the cost of maintenance weekly? Um, I've yet to see an invoice, but uh, they're they're quite cheap. Um, okay, hundred bucks a month. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is not a big investment. Sure, it's a big investment in time, but um, not to have a porta potty. Okay, um, cost will could double um, if we have to service it more. Okay, thank you. Great. Any other questions? Great. Thank you, Director Dendy. Hmm. Thanks for having me. And Director Smith. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem Commission. Can I just ask a quick question, please? Please. What information are you looking for? Because I have done a little bit of research with our department because we deal with the ongoing maintenance of restrooms. So I have some real data. I think if you could provide that and maybe our overall experience in managing other public toilets, is there any other information the rest of the commission would like? Mayor Pro Tem, I you know, this, this is kind of a new subject, I think, for us all. Um, and I don't know whether he has anything to offer, but I'd be interested from a law, law enforcement perspective, any challenges that you might foresee for Chief Petty, if, if possible. Commissioner Logan, I can dabble in an answer, and we may need Chief, but I can just tell you, Usage and vandalism is on the rise, and all of our porta potties to the point that certain vendors are questioning continuing to do business with us. 
So I don't think that touches on police because they're in remote locations and there really aren't any witnesses when these things happen. So, you know, it's increasing across the board in all of our restrooms. People are painting toilets up at the Mount Helena trailhead. Um, so there are a lot of things going on. One thing I can speak to with the research that I've done with one restroom of this size, the ongoing maintenance is approximately, this is for personnel supplies as well. Um, and the maintenance costs are approximately $15,000 a year. Break it up, divide that by 12, you're talking $1,250 a month is what it costs to, for the city at this time. Thank you. Any other questions um, for Director Smith? Okay. Thank you, Director. Ms. Opitz. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners. Uh, so the, the next uh, set of proposals that we have uh, for your consideration is obviously uh, Mayor Collins, who is not with us. Um, I did want to just mention for the benefit of the public that uh, this body had made a request at our last commission meeting um, that no decisions be made uh, because Mayor Collins is not here today. Um, it's confusing because we're in the commission chambers, but this is an administrative meeting uh, where consensus direction is given to staff, but not necessarily voting. So I just want to make that clear. Um, but we can read off uh, Mayor Collins' uh, proposals, even though he's not here with us. Um, so he also had support for the comprehensive recreation plan, the K's Kids program, uh, as well as an infusion of funding for exploration works. The uh, Carroll Cottage Stadium project, again, um, has been withdrawn. The sustainability study for the Helena Regional Sports Association, um, the Family Pro Promise Client Services Building and Emergency Shelter, support for the last chance powwow demonstration day, as well as the Good Samaritan warming shelter and adult day program. Next slide, please. So this slide is a little out of date given the conversation that has just transpired. So I'm gonna do my best on the fly to compile. <laughs> um, but I did wanna just note projects that the commission um, did have in common. Uh, so uh, my understanding now is that uh, Commissioner Logan is also potentially interested in discussing the uh, comprehensive recreation plan. So that would include uh, Commissioner Logan as well as Commissioner Dean and Mayor Collins. The solar loan project, um, we had four different uh, commissioners that provided support for that. Uh, the Case Kid program also had uh, three, Dean Shirtliff and Mayor Collins, uh, Exploration Works. Uh, had support from Commissioner Dean, Commissioner Shirtliff, and Mayor Collins. On the community project front, again, Carroll College is a moot point at this point because they have withdrawn. Um, we had uh, support from both Shirtliff, uh, Commissioner Shirtliff and Commissioner Reed for our, the Our Redeemers project. Uh, Commissioner Dean and Commissioner Collins, or excuse me, Mayor Collins, provided support for the Family Promise Client Services Building and Emergency Shelter. Uh, Commissioners Dean, Shirtliff, and Mayor Collins all provided support for the Last Chance Pow Wow. Uh, the Good Samaritan Warming Shelter and Adult Day Program included support from uh, Commissioners Dean, Shirtliff, Reed, and Mayor Collins. Uh, the Helena Regional Sports Association Sustainability Study had uh, support from Commissioners uh, Commissioner Shirtliff and Mayor Collins. And uh, I believe now we'll add... Uh, Commissioner Logan to uh, the group of commissioners that are interested in discussing the downtown public restroom, which also includes Commissioner Reed and Commissioner Shortleff. I think that that's... Yes, Commissioner Logan. If you wouldn't mind uh, adding me to the family promise. Family promise. Okay. And then um, if you could also add me on the public restroom, one thing that I would like to think about, um, and maybe this is for our next meeting, if public defecation is not in the definition of blight, then I don't know what is. 
Um, it's precisely why we have a TIF district to address blight. So if we could look at um, leveraging TIF funds, um, whether that be, you know, if the city is going to contribute um, X amount, if this is a, if, if after our, our vetting, we can say, yep, we have someone that can maintain it, that will pay to maintain it. We can cover the startup costs. I think it, it's a good use of, of TIF funds. I think we have ha a little over half a million in the downtown um, TIF fund at the moment. Um, so part coming from ARPA and to, to be the 50% match um, for the TIF. Obviously that has to go through the TIF board, but if this proposal is coming from the BID, many of whom interact very closely with the TIF board, um, that might give us an opportunity to further vet and, and work out some of those um, pieces. And I, I'm just looking at Director Dendy. Are you comfortable with something like that? Okay. Yes, Commissioner Reed. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, Ms. Opitz, I am happy to be added to the K's Kids okay. conversation. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner Reed. Uh, if I may offer a suggestion then for a next step, um, I can consolidate this list and where there are, there's common interest amongst at least three. So our um, quorum uh, amount of commissioners <laughs> interested um, in a project, we can bring those forward for additional conversation at a later meeting. Um, unless there are additional questions, um, that's all I have from a, a presentation standpoint. Um, but if there's other information that would be helpful in a subsequent meeting that we could bring forward, I'm happy to put that together. Great. Yep. Before we go to public comment, Commissioner Reed. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Ms. Opitz. Um, the comprehensive recreation plan, I don't feel like I know very much about it. I'm hesitant to use ARPA funds for consultant costs and for plans. That's I, my, I, I would prefer to use these funds for projects versus consultant funds. However, I, I am a, a thousand percent behind moving forward towards um, a regional park district, recreation district. So I'd like to know what our options are for finding funding for studies. Um, I'm interested in the concept. I'm not sure I'm there yet on ARPA, but it's something I'd like to know more about and what, you know, what what does $150,000 get us? How far down the road? What are we looking at? What are we not looking at? Um, because recreation districts are, are definitely of interest to me. Thank you. Okay. okay, any other comments or questions from the commission? If not, we are gonna go ahead and move to public comment. Um, we'll start in here in the room. Um, so please go ahead and come up to the microphone. Let me get my materials together to copy the Helena IR. I actually was uh, at the real food store, saw the newspaper. Sir, could you introduce your from the public record? Thank oh, you. yeah, uh, Nathan Costed. I live on 6th Street. Um, and I realized there was a meeting at 4 o'clock, and I was reading the paper and read Nolan Lister's great article about uh, where y'all were thinking about ARPA funding, what you've done. And then I saw this piece that kind of scared me about gross domestic product, seasonally adjusted annual rate. Um, we've seen our third quarter of negative growth in the gross domestic product. Uh, what does that mean for Helena, Montana? Uh, who knows? But um, I can say that, you know, what is ARPA? Um, the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, the funds are meant to help communities recover from the pandemic, to quote Nolan Lister's article and Andy Shirtliff. Um, what does that mean? It means we saw an unprecedented time in American history, in the modern history. Um, and how do we as a city address that with these limited funds? Um, I appreciate all the thoughtfulness. Uh, I was here at the original meeting in December, I think, when you started having these discussions about it. And um, 
I think not only has everything changed, but a lot of things have gotten worse in America and in Helena. Um, I think I just want to applaud Mayor Collins' work in his first term on fighting uh, the scourge of homelessness for veterans and children in this community, but that was blown up by the pandemic. Uh, we've all seen the growth uh, um, of people on the streets panhandling. Um, and it's really, you know, it's one of those things in your daily life. Makes you think about a lot of different things. Do you care about those people? Do you not? Um, that's up to you as elected officials. Um, and I think a budget does reflect your priorities. And I think there's a lot of these projects that it looks like they might be budgetary things as opposed to an item for a rescue plan. Um, another very concerning thing that's affecting me personally, not myself, but someone in my family on May 11th, uh, President Biden officially ended the public health emergency for COVID. Uh, this will end Medicaid coverage for 10 million Americans. Um, just more costs coming down the pike um, after COVID that we no longer have access to and we see the issues out in our community from COVID. Um, I have friends who are lawyers who are picking up a lot of work defending renters uh, as the evictions are ramping up rapidly from landlords. Wages are not growing. Um, and we see the result of this. There are, you know, stages and levels of how people are affected, but more people are under pressure. There are, are hard things going on out there, and how do we resolve them, or how can, you know, the $9 million you got from the American Rescue Plan help? Um, I do grow concerned with discussions for this ARPA money as a citizen and voter that we are going to be sending money to consultants. Uh, I see 150 for a recreation plan, 15 here. I thought I saw a 64 recommendation for a study um, for, uh, I can't remember what that is for. I didn't take good enough notes, but um, the homeowner's solar loan program, I love the concept, but the reality of you have to own a home. Um, and if you already own a home, how much help do you need from the city of Helena? Um, in this very particular instance, um, I appreciate that the city is committed to solar itself. That sounds like the kind of program where they can actually meet the goals they've set in the very uh, ephemeral, ethereal, whatever word, um, about committing to being a renewable city by 2030, um, which we all know is just not going to happen. It's just a joke. Uh, but I appreciate the effort um, and anything that gets us closer to that as somebody, I think it was Commissioner Reed said something about a cooling shelter. And I want to talk about cooling and warming shelters. Uh, you know, we just had a wonderful week of smoke. Uh, I look forward to a future where I pretty much would have to be talked into having children with the future of climate change. Um, and I can't imagine having to live out on a street with it. Um, but I wouldn't want to bring a child into this world where they have to deal with it. And um, for these homeless people to have to deal with 98 degrees for three, four weeks on end in Montana, when I remember 100 once under the age of 20 in Montana. Um, so when I see a juxtaposition between an a study for an ice skating rink warming shelter or a warming shelter for those at risk of dying from freezing um, and those who may die from um, uh, heat exhaustion. Um, those are the kind of priorities I hope you guys can manage in your budget. I think there's a lot of opportunity in your budget to do a lot of good things too, but that's not what I see is this ability for ARPA to do some direct good in the community. So I thank you for the ability to comment and for your service. Thank you, sir. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, for the record, my name is Chuck Ball. I represent the Kay McKenna Youth Foundation Board. We are the actual funding device that pays for the Kay's Kids program. So I'm just here to ask you to, as you can, as I've seen, 
a lot of you are in support of it, and that's what I'm here to make sure that 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 happens. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. We pretty much provide the funding for everybody with the exception of Kate Paradin's partial of her salary. The rest of it is what we do, and we're the actual ones that are applying for the $50,000. It's not necessarily the case, kids. It's the foundation who funds it. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, for the record, I'm John Krieger. I live on uh, Stewart Street, and uh, I've been trying to uh, support an effort to improve uh, the Memorial Park skating facility. Uh, I think that it's a one of the most valuable uh, pieces of ground that we have in terms of uh, its possibility of attracting a lot of, of kids and, you know, low income kids. It's right in the middle of town. And, um, uh, I, you know, I've, I've played hockey for years. I've, I've been skating at that skating center for, you know, probably 25 to 30 years. And people go out there when the ice is terrible, absolutely terrible. And they put on their skates and they skate and they play hockey and they have fun. And um, I can't imagine how many people we could attract if we were to really dress it up. And what I'm talking about is a pavilion and a uh, slab of concrete at about 150 feet wide and uh, 250 feet long and a um, Olympic size hockey rink. Now an Olympic size hockey rink isn't just for hockey. I mean, there's a, there's a, a wide variety of different um, things you can do in a, in a hockey rink. You can, the, the other thing to do would be to uh, cover it with um, what's called sport court in the summertime. And uh, sport court supports roller hockey and uh, ball hockey, which is played in, in your tennis shoes. And um, what they call box uh, lacrosse, uh, which is a form of lacrosse that is designed to be played in an Olympic size hockey rink, as is something called futsal, F U T S A L, which is a popular five uh, person uh, soccer game. And it's the only FIFA approved indoor soccer. And uh, the, uh, our our uh, state soccer association knows about this and approves it. Um, dancing, you know, sport court is an ideal surface for dancing, you know, having large dances, other types of, you know, community, uh, you know, community uh, events. And so, um, you know, I used to coach hockey and we went up to um, to um, Calgary and on the way to Calgary, we'd stop at this little town and, and play hockey. And it was like 1200 people lived in this town and they had a, they had a, uh, a rink with uh, two sheets of uh, refrigerated ice plus a duck pin bowling alley. And on the weekends, it was packed, absolutely packed with people from six o'clock in the morning till midnight. And so, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at Bismarck, North Dakota, they have seven um, refrigerated sheets of ice uh, indoors and they're outdoor in the outdoors, they have eight uh, rinks and all but two of them have a hockey rink uh, and a what they call a pleasure skating rink, plus a warming house. Now, Bismarck is twice as big as Helena, but, you know, they have 10 times or more uh, the capacity to, you know, get people involved with skating. And it's just one of these places you know, like you find in Eastern Europe and, you know, the, uh, the, the North countries in Europe uh, where, you know, hockey rinks and 
are, are used year round and they're just packed full of people and all kinds of events go on in these places. So I think, uh, you know, having a rink like that now, I, I've done research over the years. I've been advocating for this for 25 years. And um, I have some, I think I could, you know, come up with some ballpark figures of the different, um, you know, parts of, of this pro, uh, project. You know, you have the slab you and you'd probably want to put refrigeration wrap under- Wrap up your comments in a minute. Pardon me? If you could wrap up your comments in just a couple minutes. We, we, we try to keep comments to about two minutes, but if you could want to finish your, a few of your thoughts and then we'll move on to the rest of public comment. Okay. Thank you, sir. I have something that, uh, you know, I, I could hand out to everyone. If you would like to provide it to the clerk, she can get us all copies. Okay. That'd be okay, great. Okay, great, great. Thank you for Thank the you so opportunity. Much, sir. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Reed. Go ahead. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, I'm Paul Landis. I'm here with the Helena Regional Sports Association. And I want to address the issue of the need for our sustainability study, but I want to just touch on two points very quickly. Um, in our application for this process, we submitted a list of reasons why what we're trying to do and what we want to accomplish meets the, the needs of ARPA and why the funds would comply with what their requirements are. One of the, um, I'll point out one thing and I want to add to it. We showed in there, there was a study done by the HRSA, the Helen Regional Sports Association, that showed uh, a project of this nature would generate 12,230 annual visitors who would spend roughly a million three per year. Um, significant number. Two weeks ago, uh, just under two weeks, we received, we, we finished our conceptual plan for the project and a cost estimate, what it costs. Um, the plan includes an indoor aquatic center, an indoor court center, and an indoor turf center. We've added an additional component recently since we submitted this uh, with an indoor arena. And the arena is designed to hold special events such as concerts. It's, uh, it can be converted to hardwood courts to hold, uh, which would meet the needs of those who want to hold state or regional tournaments for basketball, volleyball, wrestling, anything of that nature. So we will be updating the feasibility study as we move forward on this. These numbers I just mentioned, a million three to the community and 12,000 visitors, are much, much larger with the addition of the arena. Um, the other thing I'd like to touch on briefly initially is in August of this past year, myself, two other people, Heather Graham and Elizabeth Krauss, we got together and talked about whether or not the three of us would make a good team to move forward as a leadership on, on this, uh, the Helena Regional Sports Association. We have a skill set, three different skill sets. We have the desire. For two months, we spent a lot of time doing our own due diligence to decide if we wanted to move forward. We looked at the community needs. That doesn't take long. I think everybody in this room knows what the needs are for sports facilities in the community. The bigger issue was, are we going to have the ability to complete this? Uh, it's one thing to say you're going to do it. It's another to complete it. Um, we came to the conclusion, the three of us, that, yeah, we want to do it. We want to devote our time and energy, and we have. One of the common um, comments that we heard during our due diligence, and we paid attention to it, was that in the past, the city of Helena hasn't really shown the commitment for a long-term vision for projects of this type. And we didn't know if that was true or not, but um, speaking personally, my background is a real estate developer. I've been involved in projects like this where a pr private entity gets involved with a public entity and how do you bring it to fruition? There are three elements and they're all simple elements. And I think that they're all things that can be accomplished. The first one, the project needs to serve a community interest given. No, I don't need to get into that. A uh, private entity needs to assemble a skilled professional team. We've done exactly that. We brought in design and development and contracting professionals that share the same commitment to this project and the passion that we do. We're within days, probably weeks away from bringing in a professional organization as a fundraiser 
that also assist us with community outreach. So we've got the team. The third is an open and transparent relationship with the private entity and the public entity. So I've been to every ARPA administrative meeting since this process started, except for one, I missed one. That was my fault. Um, and so I've had a chance to, to watch everyone here and see how it's gone through. I've had discussions with staff. Uh, I know who our team is. Our team works really well together. Um, I don't see that as an obstacle, whether or not there's been issues in the past. Right now, I look at this as an opportunity to bring something forward to Helena, and we're really committed to doing that. Um, I was personally that meeting several weeks ago, or several months ago, when there's $4 million worth of asks and $2 million worth of money, and I'm going, how are they going to figure this one out? And you gave, and you came to the, the decision, let's fund the three projects we agree on and we'll address the others later. There's already equipment moving at our Redeemers. That was a good decision and it was a good way to, to solve a lot of problems. Um, so here we are. So why do we need the study? Um, there's two reasons. The first one being, nobody wants to see a, a facility of this type built and then run, have to shutter any doors or close any programs. You're dealing with this in some capacity right now at the Memorial Pool. You're seeing a problem where there's a huge need, but financially it's a burden. So we know, and I think everybody in this room knows that the needs there to fill every court, every turf will be very, the, the pool, all that stuff will be filled. The addition of the arena is gonna bring in a lot of extra revenue a lot of revenue but we still need to go further so we've looked outside the box and we're trying to identify programs that are underserved there's a need out there what we found was in lewis and clark county in their data they show 10 percent of the population is physically challenged um that's a big number if you add to that the population that is um that is either behavioral and or emotionally challenged the number is even bigger so how do we meet that needs with a sports complex, entertainment complex? We've addressed this by talking to local groups, but to state groups and national groups that deal in this every day. They know how to create programs. They have created programs. They know how to design facilities. They know the certain things you need to add to make it more accessible to certain populations. And we look at that as a big portion of what our project's gonna be. One, one kind of out of the box answer is a question therapy, equine therapy. Um, the VA is on the cutting edge. They're the, really the leading group in the entire country on this. They have a big facility here where they do it. They need indoor facilities. We're gonna design that and we're gonna do it. So that's that's number one. You could start um, wrapping up soon. Number two, and then I'm done. Number two, the donors and the public entities have to have the assurance that they're gonna be donating and participating in a project that's going to have long-term viability. That's the whole purpose of our study. And we'll be able to provide a lot of information to the company that does it. So conclusion, uh, two things. Um, if, if you choose to grant what we're asking, I think what the city is doing is making a big statement that they support a project of this nature and they recognize the needs. And that will echo within the community. Whether you choose to grant this request or not, we would like to come back to the commission at a later date, short, sooner than later, and give a full presentation in terms of what it is we're presenting. So thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, sir. Mayor Pro Tem, commissioners, I'm Donna Church with Family Promise. I thank you for your support, Commissioner Dean, and it sounds like you work with us at your church and um, Family Promise has the opportunity to help families with children. We help non-traditional family units. It could be a grandmother with a child. It could be an aunt with a child. It could be an uncle with a child. We're the only entity in Helena that works with children, male and female, that helps make a difference in their lives. We've had children that have grown up that we've seen as young adults, that they have told us 
how our program allowed one particular gentleman. He said his dad, it allowed him the space to not have to worry about his car payment, to not have to worry about housing, to be able to put himself together, to wrap himself in community and love with the churches and all the people that help support Family Promise, that his, he was then able to go to college and make a difference in the world. So that's what we're asking your support for within Family Promise. We have identified it a location. We've worked with them. We're negotiating with them. We've made an offer and we're waiting to hear back. We are diligently working on that. I, I feel like we're this close. We just, it's not final, so we're not at liberty to say, but we do appreciate your support in thinking about those children as you see the children on the street. And we've read recently how the schools, there's so many homeless and stories I can share with you from when I've been a volunteer with uh, a lady in a fellow church, she had her teenage children with us, and they were saying, I didn't realize he was homeless. And you wouldn't believe that amount of children living in their cars, the children that don't have those things that we have had in our lives where we can go to bed comfortably at night, waking up reassured that we're going to have food in our belly, that our parents are stable, and that we have uh, can be able to focus on school and our, our you know, normal lives, playing basketball, being able to use the recreational facilities. So please, we ask for your support, and thank you much. Thank you, ma'am. And really briefly, I think since Commissioner Reed wasn't able to um, be here for the public comment, it would might be helpful if um, Family Promise could send a follow-up email about where you are in the process. I understand that you can't divulge who the prospective seller is, but um, I think that might be helpful to answer Commissioner Reed's question before our next meeting. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, next public comment. You're good. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, I want to thank you all for considering our request to work in the community with our warming shelter and adult day program. Just very, very quickly, like many projects Good Samaritan starts, we start as grassroots projects. This project is no different. It started out with a grant for people who are already in recovery, working on their sobriety. However, we grew to bring more and more people into our program who are not at that point yet, and they're starting. We've helped people get to treatment. We've helped them get back to treatment. We've helped them with housing through other programs. We worked with HPD to, for the cases where maybe they don't need to go to the jails, but maybe our staff as peer supports can go out and help them in the community. Those that don't want to go to treatment, they're still coming. I know three right now that are not going to treatment, but they're coming in every day and saying, today I heard one man say, I am 13 days clean. I attribute that to the program at Good Samaritan, the staff that are peer supports, and there to be passionate to the people that come in. So that's that. The other thing I wanted to mention really quick is, Mayor Pro Tem, you were right on about the defecation and those bathrooms. It is so needed. Unfortunately, fortunately, my husband had moved around a lot with his job, and every small town that we've been in, it's either a, a walking mall, it's a plaza, it's a city center. There is a restroom for people to use. I think this would be greatly needed and supported by not only do we work with the people that are homeless and have the needs in the community, but the people that come to see Helena, it's a beautiful community. I love it, but we've got to have something for people here. So I really hope this is taken into consideration. There might be a project Good Sam can work on too with the folks we serve with keeping that up. So, but thank you all very much. Great. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, Manager, and Staff. Um, I'm here. Uh, Jerry Hoover is my name. I live on the west side of uh, Helena. And I'm a member of Our Redeemer's Lutheran Church. 
And I'm here tonight just to say, give you a personal thank you for your commitment to us of the $1.58 million. It's a very generous commitment. To give you an update, we are still looking for other sources of funding. We do have a request before Lewis and Clark County uh, for funding from, from, uh, from their, their funds. And, uh, but so far we haven't had any, any further resources that we've been able to procure. But I would like to also say to you that um, um, we also like to make a, a thank you to the United Way and their, uh, and their offer to redirect any funding you might have been considering for them uh, to be applied to the affordable housing project at Our Redeemers. And also we'd like to say thank you to Carroll College for their social conscience and, the, uh, and their withdrawal from it and, and allowing maybe funds that may have been allocated to them to these other, these other applicants. So with that, on behalf of Rocky Mountain Development Center, um, the uh, Habitat for Humanity in Helena, and for the YWCA, thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment in the room? Okay, we'll go ahead and go online. Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, I do have two hands raised on line. Our first being uh, Mr. Mark Judeman. Mr. Judeman. Hello, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Uh, hope you can hear me. Mr. Judeman, we can't hear you in the room yet, but it might be it, us because I see the microphone moving. Yeah, can you hear me now? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? We can. Maybe speak up just a little bit louder. Okay. Um, hello, I'm, I'm Mark Judeman. I live in Helena. Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Judeman. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for all the due diligence um, that you are performing uh, with this consideration of uh, funding through um, these federal funds. Uh, clearly, all of the projects that have been suggested have great need and value, uh, and I, I certainly appreci appreciate the impact that they could provide to our community. Um, but I am here to speak in favor of um, the um, suggestion by Commissioner Logan and others uh, to do uh, some major solar projects on city uh, property. Um, what that might do is offer uh, an actual return to the um, taxpayer on that investment. And I'd also like to, to mention uh, that under the Inflation Reduction Act, the city would be eligible for at least a 30% direct pay for their share of expenses. Uh, so there'd be even more money coming back into the city. Um, and that actually could be possibly more depending on the domestic content uh, of the projects. Um, whether or not we're in an energy community uh, and so on. As a previous speaker had noted, there is a 100% clean electricity by 2030 goal that the commission has established by resolution, 50% uh, by 2025. And we are nowhere near um, getting to that goal. This would be a, a certainly a step in the right direction uh, and also, I appreciate Commissioner Dean's suggestion that um, there be additional funds allocated for the um, funding uh, the um, uh, the the zero percent loan program, revolving loan program. Thank you. I hope you could hear most of that. We did hear all of your testimony, Mr. Judeman. Thanks so much. Okay. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, next I have Renee Bauer. Ms. Bauer. Good evening, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Um, thank you for allowing me to visit with you. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about 
the progress on our proposal and just a general update of Family Promise. So we all know that Family Promise has a day center shelter in the community. And just within the last month, we paid off the mortgage on that. So we now own that property free and clear. That property is one that we can expand on, but we also have submitted a bid to another property that is substantially larger than the property that we own. That bid is currently in the back and forth of things that uh, happen when you're trying to, to buy property. Um, but one of the questions that the commissioners have had is the, the plan that we submitted doesn't seem to have finite details. Well, we couldn't disclose finite details because we were in the negotiations of buying another property um, to expand our ability to shelter homeless families. So just wanted to quickly let you know, um, our program is expanding leaps and bounds in the numbers that we're serving. And we certainly feel like we're a valuable community member. And um, I will, as requested, send an email with more details as I'm able to uh, disclose them to the council. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem Commissioners, I do have one more. Um, Sean Morrison. Mr. Morrison. Hello, thank you, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, Mayor Pro Temp, excuse me. Thank you for letting me speak. I, I have to say, um, my name is Sean Morrison. I live in Helena. I grew up um, primarily outside of East Helena, but have been in this community for a long time. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not enviable of the choices you have to make. I think one of the blessings of ARPA funding it is, has gotten us as a community to come together with a lot of very um, wonderful ideas about improving our community. Um, and certainly some of these ideas are, are, are high, high need. Um, I just generally want to make two quick comments um, about the things that I see as, as worthy of your time and effort. You know, first, obviously, I think we recognize the need for housing um, and, and shelter for those who are in the unhoused community. Um, I also want to say that I think that the Parks and Recreation Plan, um, the master plan, is an excellent idea. And I do think, maybe contrary to some of the prior testimony today, that it addresses a need that, that our community has in times of crisis. Um, you know, collective uh, sports, collective activities, individual sports, individual activities, even just the opportunity to be outside was the way I think many of us survived through the last crisis, um, the pandemic. It will be something we will need in our future crises, and it is good for the health and well-being of our community at every income level. It's certainly something um, is utilized by a lot of our uh, the children in our community who are living in transitionary or temporary housing. Um, so I, I want to weigh my support behind that. I do know the city maybe has uh, in the past paid for plans that have sat on shelves, but I have a lot of confidence in Director Smith and believe that if we got a plan, a master plan like the one you were talking about, um, he would not let that sit and get dusty on a shelf that we would see these sort of things come, come to fruition. So thank you for letting me speak and thank you for all your hard work. Again, it's not an enviable position you're in and I'm confident we'll come to good decisions about how to use this money. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Is there any additional public comment, Madam Clerk? Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, I have no further hands raised and no public comment online. Okay, great, thank you. Any final comments or questions from the commission on this item? Okay, um, so we are, I think next steps, um, in the packet, we had listed potentially June 7th was in the PowerPoint. However, um, there could be potential that there are some commissioners with um, conflicting schedules. Um, so if it's all right with the rest of the commission, um, I think maybe we'll direct the city manager and city clerk's office um, with direct, I almost said director Opitz, but you'll get there. <laughs> You're going to be director soon, I'm sure, Ms. Opitz, um, to find, uh, talk, I guess, work with the five members of the commission to find a date that everyone will be there. I think we, we've we tried to set a standard of um, having these ARPA discussions when everyone 
we're making decisions about ARPA when everyone can be there. I know the mayor will be watching this recording, um, but when we make our final deliberations to, um, to decide what is in the resolution, I'd, I'd like to make sure all five are there. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, we we will do that. Thanks. Okay. Um, final item is the FY twenty four budget wrap up. Um, Ms. Danielson. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and uh, Commissioner. So, um, at a, a prior administrative meeting, you had asked that I put a kind of a running list of um, decisions that have been made and maybe some outstanding items and. Uh, uh, items that were uh, had no consensus to fund. So I've put together a list here. Um, we started out with a deficit of uh, 74,292. The commission uh, had, had consensus on um, funding the Humane Society at their full 6% increase request, which added uh, $1,319. And um, the historic preservation request of uh, 40,000 to fully fund the 50% request of their budget. Um, I am going to uh, pause there for a comment from uh, Manager Burton on that funding request. Well, Mayor Pro Tem Commissioners, if the Commission approves the increase, uh, for historic preservation, I would ask for some leeway before we release those funds. I think we have some structural and operational uh, discussions that we need to have uh, with Lewis and Clark County in terms of how um, how they operate with the city of Helena. Are there comments on that from either of the commissioners? Perhaps. So, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, thank you. Um, are am I understanding you're wanting a decision out of us tonight? Is that accurate? Um, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Commissioner, on these items? Yes. Um, well, we're in the process of preparing the preliminary budget right now, these are kind of the final wrap up items. If we don't get consensus, then we will have to bring them back or make assumptions uh, based upon the preliminary budget and the hearing in this room. Okay. Um, all right, we'll, I'll pause for a minute, so thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, and so the next category is that we uh, brought in an earlier discussion tonight, um, the prioritized uh, capital funding that we listed out for you. Um, also, there's um, a dedicated $150,000 in cash reserves for the next season's sidewalk program. Um, there has been no consensus on, at, at this point, in increasing that funding. Um, on, um, on hold is, uh, the continue ask for, um, general fund savings to fund, um, next year's season that actually falls into fiscal 24, um, for the swimming pool funding of $80,000. There's an MIU, MOU with the BID for, uh, trash and collection and flower maintenance of $8,000 that there's been no consensus on so far. I did um, note in a prior meeting that there's currently 72,000 in uh, uh, cash repayments in the solar fund to fund that program at 72,000 for the next fiscal year, but there's been no consensus on increasing that funding to, to date. And there's also been some discussion on wanting to increase funding for the sidewalk program due to the number of applications that have been submitted for the program. In the final category, um, there was no, cons I just wanted to call it out that there was no consensus to fund the, the community aid grants, although we did receive one public comment at the last meeting um, for your consideration. And so um, as manager Burton 
has indicated, um, we're really looking for direction so that we can um, start preparing the preliminary uh, budget book. Um, we do need time to, to put that together. It's a pretty big effort. And so um, if we could hopefully finalize funding for at least putting that book together, that, that will come to the commission on June 12th. Um, and then a uh, final preliminary budget adoption is at the end of June. However, as you know, uh, final budget adoption is not until um, September. So there could potentially be uh, changes between preliminary to final budget adoption. I think we're just looking for some, some direction so that we can move forward with uh, presenting our, our budget or the city manager's budget. <laughs> Commissioner Logan. Thank you. So, so it'll be the three of us providing that consensus, just so I'm clear tonight. Yeah, I think we, Mayor Pro Tem, find ourselves in that situation. Um, if you're comfortable doing that, uh, otherwise, I think we'll have to put this off until our next meeting. Well, Mayor Pro Tem, um, I guess I would maybe start at the bottom and work up. So relative to the community grants, HACF, Symphony, MBAC, uh, Sunrun, Big Sky Pride, uh, as I look at the funding that HACF has, and the city of Helena has, have given to the community through CARES over the last couple of years, and, and coupled with the fact that we're having some difficulty meeting some of those basic commitments uh, above, such as the swimming pool and uh, historic preservation, which has been, you know, a longstanding commitment that we've had with Lewis and Clark County and our community. Um, I would say uh, I'm not comfortable with the community grants personally, uh, given the level of funding that we've given with CARES money. So I could, I guess what I'm saying is I could live without that. It's, it's tough. These are tough decisions. Um, and I'm supportive of historic preservation. Um, and then it gets a, a little bit trickier. The, the swimming pool funding, you know, obviously we've had some discussion about different places we could enhance that funding and um, and clearly seeing the community need. Uh, I guess I would say I'm supportive of that number and supportive of the sidewalk program in addition to the the um, the suggestion. I, it sounds like we're going to discuss that or are we? Is the sidewalk program something we will discuss um, with ARPA money or the general fund savings? Was that one of those that rose to the top? Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Commissioner, <clears throat> we have 150,000 in the budget. Yes. If the commission wants to go beyond that because of all the applications, et cetera, <clears throat> then uh, that would be on the table for ARPA for an enhancement, as I see it. So, so I guess probably what I'm saying is I should I should wrap it up. Um, is I'm comfortable with everything down to um, eighty eight thousand. All the figures above that um, on down, as an individual commissioner. So, do you want? Commissioner Shirtliff, do you have anything you want to add first? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, thank you very much. Uh, I've got a question for uh, Manager Burton. You mentioned the sidewalk program and the number of applicants. Do we know, I guess, how many applicants we've received, applications we've received? Or Daniels, yeah. Director Daniels. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, um, Commissioner Shirtliff, I, I don't know the exact number right now, but the last I heard, it was around 120. I know that the first day it was like 98 by 4 p.m. <laughs> yeah, our Mayor Pro Tem, our servers were getting overloaded. 
Mayor Pro Tem, I do have David Konopke's hand raised oh. online. Director Konopke. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Um, currently, we have 108. Can't hear you yet. Uh, oh, Mayor Pro Tem, can you hear me? We can hear you now. Sorry. Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners, currently there are 108 applications that we received so far. And even if you just assume a very small amount of $5,000 per um, application, that, that puts you up to close to $600,000. Um, but some of those are obviously going to be larger. So just to give you a quick update. Thank you, Director Kanaki. Mayor Pro Tem, thank you. Uh, so I know the pool has been, you know, it's a, it's a great asset that we have. Uh, I'm interested in talking about or finding ways to, you know, get it out of the red and, and looking at hours and program offerings and um, add another note on that too, but it's somewhere in my notes here. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with, you know, Commissioner Logan about the community grants. Um, but again, you know, if it, you worry if it's going to make or break, say the sun run for not getting a thousand dollars from us, but, uh, they are all from pride to impact to the symphony. Um, I think Helena area community foundation, uh, does a wonderful job. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm willing to have this discussion. I've, I wasn't, ex yeah, I'm. I'll leave it at that for right now. Okay. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Shirtliff. Um, I, I would like to, so Director Danielson, the 72,000 for this, we have 72,000 that we could revolve into this from the current fund. Is that accurate? Um, Mayor Pro Tem, yes, we have $72,000 currently. Okay, so I, I would be of the mind to utilize that this year. Um, I think that that program we we can't meet the like the sidewalk loan program. We can't meet the demand, um, and I think the more families and homes that we can get moved to solar, the better. Um, it saves them money. It saves uh, the community energy consumption, and um, I think it's been a good investment for for everyone who's who's utilized it. So I would I would prefer to use that seventy two that's already there to to fund that. Um, I'm supportive of, I wanted to wait until we got to the contingency piece to talk about the additional funding for sidewalks. I really would like to see us expand that um, funding to meet the need. I don't believe we'll probably be able to meet the whole need right now. Um, but I'm, I'd like to have that conversation when we, after we pass the resolution addressing the ARPA contingency fund. Um, to then see what we can use from that to address some of the additional demand for the sidewalk program. I'm very supportive of it. I just want to make sure that that resolution passes first. I expect it will, but, um, and then I'd like to hold, I mean, I really would prefer not to take off the community grants piece. Um, I understand that we're trying to finish the preliminary budget, but I do know, I mean, for the, for example, with the, with the sun run, um, just when we had the last public comment, the return on investment for that thousand dollars is entire solar rays on schools. Um, so I think that's a pretty low dollar investment for a high return for our community. Um, and Symphony obviously brings in tons of economic impact, a really big piece um, of our community and um, Big Sky Pride. Um, we added that two years ago. Um, we, I, I, I made the motion to amend the budget and that was to help pay for their insurance for the um, alcohol liability. I don't know if they have other funding sources for that. I think it's an important thing that we're a part of, but I also know we partner with them with HPD and, um, and other entities in other ways during Big Sky Pride. Um, so I'm not sure what, I don't know where the conversation has gone with them lately, um, but 
if they don't need the thousand dollars, fine. Um, I just don't know if that's still an issue in terms of their liquor liability during the weekend. And <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem, commissioners, uh, we're down to a short list. Yeah. And we will uh, be able to bring it back, uh, and particularly when all five members are present and get further direction, uh, even if we have to have some of this discussion while we're considering the preliminary budget. Okay. All right. Any final? Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, just, um, I guess, hopefully to clarify um, my comments on the community grants, it's nothing against either any of those organizations it has to do with, um, you know, the fact that we're, we're struggling to make meet some of our basic commitments. And um, like I say, a number of them have been recip significant recipients of, of um, CARES funding. Yep. And so just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Do you require any other direction from us? Yes, Director Diaz. What else do you want? <laughs> Thank you. So um, I guess I'm asking if we need to bring this back to another administrative meeting, which was beyond June 7th, but I'm, you made the comment that not all of the commission may be present at that meeting. Um, our next step is to bring the full preliminary budget um, presentation on, I believe it's June 12th. Um, I, you know, you certainly can make amendments to the budget at that June 12th meeting for the final preliminary adoption later that month. Um, we were just trying to solidify the numbers yeah. so we could put together the book because it, it, uh, it, it assists us that we don't have a lot of time between the June 7th and trying to post that book on so June 12th. I, I wonder, Commissioner Logan had stepped out. The, I had, I said I was in favor of um, using the 72,000 that's currently in the revolving fund to fund this year's budget so it wouldn't be an additional funding amount. Would you be comfortable with that? Not to put you on the spot, but I'm thinking if we can get consensus up till the there. Spot. No, that's fine. Sure. Okay. And yeah. Commissioner Shirtliff would. So I think, I mean, and another commissioner can certainly amend after the preliminary budget, but it sounds like there are three of us here tonight. Um, it sounds we have consensus in up to the 72,000. And then um, from everything after that, maybe we can come back to revisit um, once we have that contingency fund resolution passed. Um, and maybe a clearer idea as to where the preliminary budget is. Thank you, um, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners. So I'm not sure what the attendance looks like on the 7th, but I'm assuming that there will be five or four, and we'll bring this back on the 7th. Great. Okay. Any final thoughts on this agenda item? Okay, we'll go ahead and move to um, public comment. Is there any public comment on this agenda item? Any online? Mayor Pro Tem Commissioners, I do have one hand raised online from Emily Frazier. Ms. Frazier. Hello, good evening, pro tem commissioner, or pro tem mayor and commissioners. Can you hear me? We can. Marvelous. Uh, this is Emily Frazier with the Helena Area Community Foundation. Um, just wanted to briefly say I, I recognize that you are in a situation where you are making sure that you can meet your commitments. And of course, we um, do respect that. But I did want to, you know, <clears throat> say something. Um, I don't know how not to. The program that we've been partnering with the city and also with Lewis and Clark County has been, in our eyes, honestly, almost shockingly successful. Uh, the way that it's brought the nonprofit community together and the number of applications we've gotten for some truly amazing things have been really incredible. Um, 
We are scheduled to present, um, I believe, on June 21st, so it's a little ways down the road, but we have turned in all of our reports and including impact reports from a previous year's granting. Um, I do recognize that uh, we did help disperse a good amount of CARES funding, but uh, to me, this annual MOU that we have is possibly even more valuable um, than those one-time funds, as, as much as that was great, and it really provided a uh, lift to nonprofits who needed it. Uh, this, this program, uh, really having that partnership between the community foundation, the city and the county, it's, it's creating a, a, a sense of, of partnership among the nonprofit community that I, I don't think we could have created on our own. Um, even though we are granting, um, you know, from our own funds every year as well. Um, so I'm, I'm very hesitant to lose that. I know that it's an annual MOU and it's certainly not guaranteed um, funding each year, but I would strongly encourage you to, you know, withhold, you know, taking that off the table if, if possible until you've at least gotten a chance to review the reports we've sent in. Again, I, I really think you might be amazed by the just sheer levels of um, uh, applications we've received, the growth over the last year, and um, really the the change that that's making in how we work communally with nonprofits. Um, it's a small amount of dollars um, each year, uh, but those really do matter to a lot of nonprofits. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Frazier. And I think just to clarify where my position was, I, I don't I don't want this off the table. I just think I'd like it held um, until we have that contingency and then maybe have another conversation um, about where we're going. Okay, great. All right. Um, any other public comment on the um, general fund uh, agenda item? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to general public comment. Is there any public comment on any item not discussed today? Any online? Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, I have no hands raised and no further public comment online. Great. Any final thoughts from the commission or staff? Okay, great. Um, really appreciate everyone's hard work today and um, we will be, staff will be reaching out regarding when all five will be here for uh, the next decision step. Um, just for clarity, we did, we have not reached consensus on, I got an email while we were in here. We did not reach consensus on ARPA Ms. Opitz was just noting how many and which commissioners were supporting which projects. And at the next meeting, we will come to official consensus of what items will be put on the final resolution. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned.